about the difference between cremation and, um, and burying the body and, the, and letting the worms get it and, and trying to decide what the earth likes then. And I'm thinking probably that the earth likes burying. Interesting. South Dakota is like burying. <laughs> What'd you say? They did South Dakota they bury. Right. Uh -huh. but, but, but in a, in a paper bag. Uh -huh. of, yeah. The way they go. And there has been mention of the environmental leak of uh, the fuel and what right. fumes that go into the air, and you're not really just dust. Mm -hmm. So, well, I was very emotional in several parts of it because it brought back to mind the time when my husband did his transition, and that has gave, given me a lot of interest in that process. And when um, uh, a little over ten and a half years ago, that Richard died, and I was there in that process of his body, um, him uh, <coughs> breathing more slowly and more slowly and then transitioning. Um, and I think I mentioned it at one of our other films where the energy from his body sort of went into mine and I felt his energy within me. And I felt I was looking through his eyes at the process of his his life ending there, but his energy was within me. Wow. And periodically, he comes and goes. Oh, <laughs> Still, <wow. laughs> and I'm blessed to have him. <laughs> wow. I kept looking over at people wondering if they were burying their dead or just tired. You know, I'm always aware that these are very. In a way, you have a gloss over. Just let it sit. I don't know. Okay, what did you have to say? Oh, I don't know if it's significant. I, I, I did have a, an interesting experience with, with death. Uh, there's been very little death in my life. Mm -hmm. My dad was, was really not a very good father. That is putting it extremely mildly. But for some reason, I always felt that I wanted to be there with him. Because I didn't think there would be much family around him. And so, in his last day, I, I had basically driven up to Bay County and turned right around and went back down to see him. And uh, he was still pretty nasty when I was there. But, um, he started writing because he couldn't, he was too weak to speak. He wrote. And, um, and he died at the end of the sentence. Mm. Wow. Um, the sentence was, please stay with me. <coughs> and every word was lighter and lighter and lighter until mm. you, you, you can read me, but. You know, it was very, very light, and he just didn't breathe in again. Mm -hmm. And I think that was very blessed. That was a big mm -hmm. blessing for, frankly, for him and me both, you know, so. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad I was there with him. Hallelujah. Yes. And I, mean, I just found myself feeling very what their lives were like and, and what they wanted, their intention with their life, what they wanted to say with their life. Mm -hmm. I felt how refreshing, how very much what I'd like my life to be like. Mm -hmm. And uh, I appreciate you sharing your story. I, uh, I, I too watched my husband pass away uh, and, and was with him as he took his last breaths. And the beauty of that is really amazing. As much as I uh, have all of the emotion of, of, of loss from that time, I wouldn't have wanted to be any other place. Mm -hmm. And I am so 
so grateful. What a gift it was <coughs> to be there. <laughs> I think us all sharing that in our in our culture, we tend to just set it so far away. We don't want to talk about it. We want to gloss over. We don't. There's there's so much about it that is unknown, and we'd like to keep it that way. And, um, yeah. And really, there is just so little of it to be afraid of. And I only would have known that from being open to that experience, to be there. And the beauty is far outweighs uh, well, the sadness is still there. I don't know really how to work that, but it's beautiful. How long ago did your husband transition? Eight years. Eight years. And how long were you together? Fourteen. Fourteen years. Very good. I often said with my 30 years with Richard, he taught me a lot. And the final lesson was not to fear death. That was, I mean, that was the blessed lesson. Not to fear it. Yes. On the subject, you mentioned the word fear. Mm -hmm. Is that, the question is, we're born, where do we come from? Mm -hmm. we go? And that is acknowledged by science over 90% of the universe we live in is totally invisible to us, even to science. Yes. Yes. Last year, he was separating, as she spoke. Mm -hmm. He was mm -hmm. separating from his body. Mm -hmm. And he would just always remind me that he, he was ready. He was ready. And it was okay. And, yeah. and, uh, and we're the ones that struggle with that. But, yeah. but watching her and how she was so able to articulate that was beautiful. Yes. And beautiful to be able to do that, to, to, to separate and know that you're separating and look forward to the other side of that, you know, what you were saying, right? Just that unknown, that unseen. Be okay with that. I found the film um, both really moving in the ways that you were saying, and also some of it a little daunting in the sense that. Um, these were uh, so, uh, uh, it's kind of determined and, you know, as they said, they died their deaths and they lived their lives, you know, it's incredibly. Um, I think there are many different kinds of deaths. So, <laughs> my name is Dennis Bumstead. Becky asked me to talk a little bit. I'm part of the Ali Dam community that is largely on the other side of Cobb. And um, she asked me to talk a little bit about um, our what, easy death, 